everyone and welcome to this edition of Startup Central. I'm Ava Andabash. If you want to reach out to us or send any feedback, suc at etnow.tv is where you can send us an email. Well, something certainly brewing at Blue Tokai Coffee Roasters. Well, this is the company that's a specialty coffee company that's in the spotlight on the back of their recent $30 million fundraise led by A91 Capital Partners. This follows the latest fundraise that took place in the month of June and is one of the largest investment rounds in the Indian specialty coffee market or industry till date. My colleague Nantara Rai was in conversation with Matt uh, Chitranjan, who is a co-founder and CEO at Blue Tokai Coffee Roasters. Let's uh, take a look as they enjoy some Terra Ted over a cup of coffee. Hi there and welcome to this ET Now special. I'm Nantara Rai. Today, not coming to you from our studio in Noida, but from a Blue Tokai Cafe in Delhi. Why Blue Tokai? because they're trying to defy the winter funding season and raise big bucks. I'm with the co-founder, Matt. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us and for the coffee. Thanks for having me. <laughs> How did you defy the winter season? How did you get a big check? Well, uh, it was a long process, uh, but we're very happy to have brought on board A91. Uh, they're a great consumer fund in India. And I think it really speaks to the strength of our business how we've really defined specialty coffee in India. A91 was really impressed with the brand and the way that we built a, built a great coffee company. And so that's what really what crossed us over the line. Can you share with our viewers how much you've raised and what you intend to do with it? So we've raised $30 million. Uh, we, like I said, a big check. Yeah, yeah, good, good amount of funding for us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all growth capital. We're not really burning as a business. So with this capital, we'll expand. We'll open up uh, another 200 cafes throughout the country and also bring uh, more consumer products as well. So one second, you said you're not burning anymore, so it's growth capital, are you profitable? Uh, we're break even. Oh, you're break even? Break even. So you won't incur losses now that you're going to open to No, no, so yeah, yeah. no, 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 actually. Give money to Facebook, Google <laughs> to get consumers in the cafes. Actually, we've always uh, run the business in a very judicious manner. Though we've been doubling every year, our, bin, our burn has been quite minimal. Okay. So that's kind of part of our DNA as a company is not to burn money. So you said you want to enter new I'm guessing new uh, you know categories so what what is the what's in the offering so first for us is expanding the cafe footprint uh, cafes are really top of the funnel customer acquisition for us people come in they like the coffee then it's much easier to transition them to other parts of the business so for us consumer uh, consumer products is a big focus so we have the easy pours the cold brew cans here we'll be opening up uh, new varieties of, of new products for that Nespresso compatible capsules. The goal is to make it as easy as possible to have great tasting coffee at home. And for that, we want to be available across wherever people buy their coffee. So obviously when you come to a cafe, it should be a Butokai cafe. But then when you're uh, going to the grocery store, when you're on Hyperlocal, when you're ordering online, we want to be the go-to brand for good quality Indian coffee. So coffee, yeah, there'll be no tea, there'll be no milk, tea there'll be is, no dairy. Tea is not a, not a focus area for us, but uh, obviously India is a milk drinking country, so we will be bringing to uh, market milk-based products as well. Like what? So like the cans will be available uh, as an ice so latte. like flavored milk? and. No, it'll be like a traditional ice latte coffee, just okay. coffee and milk. Well, we would uh, add flavors later, but uh, initially the focus is on bringing kind of the, the cafe experience yeah. to bring it to your home. So Matt, since I'm sitting with you, um, you know, Earlier this week, a huge controversy broke out in the UK where we've actually seen the Chancellor trying to explain inflation to the public by using a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. right? To explain the buy the double digit 10% plus inflation. What has it been for you folks? So, coffee prices have skyrocketed in the last couple of years, uh, driven by a number of factors with the pandemic. More people were brewing coffee at home, supply was constrained because of weather issues in Brazil that led the commodity price to increase to a very high level. Now it started to come back down, but we've never operated in the commodity market. We've always been a specialty coffee company. We've been paying a premium to growers ever since we've been uh, in existence. And that's a more stable market where the pricing is, 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 is less volatile. So coffee prices, when they shot up, did not increase as much as it would have been for a commodity player because we've already had a relationship with the growers and we've been paying a premium for a significant amount of time. Now that prices have come down, our, our prices should come down a bit as well, but... Um, Will you pass that on to the consumer? Uh, yes, yes, yes. We're, uh, for us as a brand, our, our goal is to have uh, uh, sort of mass premium pricing. We don't want to be the most expensive player in the market. Our you, cafe and you don't want to be the cheapest player either? No, 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 definitely. I mean, we, we have a very high quality product and, and there is a premium associated with that. 
But the goal for us is to have pricing that's affordable to a wider segment of the population. So tell me something. In the last two years, when we did see coffee prices skyrocket, uh, every year we hear about the bean shortage as well. Did you raise prices and by how much? Yeah, every year we've been raising in line with the increasing green rates. So they've uh, increased anywhere from 5 to 10%. Uh, so we look at bring it down? Because you know, like when shampoos and soaps get more expensive, we never see that get cheaper. Yeah, so at least on the, the retail side, we do want to bring uh, the coffee prices down. I think in the cafe, there's other inflationary pressures involved. So I, I don't see cafe prices dropping, but definitely on the, the coffee packets that you brew at your, your home, that'll, that'll come down. Who's your main competitor? Main competitor, so I mean, Starbucks is the largest uh, coffee the company in, in yeah. India. They're in, in, in India, they're positioned as a very premium brand. Uh, so for us, that would be the, the largest. It's not barista, it's not cafe coffee day, it's not third wave coffee, which is mm, starting no, out. No, no, uh, no, no, no. So I think a lot of these other brands are more in the commodity segment. Uh, whereas in, in the specialty segment, there's really no one at the scale that we have. Okay. Now for the cafe, um, I, I totally get the synergy between the coffee and why I need to have cafe and the front end and all of that stuff. But that's a lot of overheads to take and it's not even your core business. How will you do it? So and actually, you want to compete with Starbucks. So cafes have become sort of the core business. It's around two thirds of the overall revenue of, of the company. So what is the revenue? Uh, so that's, 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 that's something that we really want to disclose right now. Okay. Uh, uh, right now, we're, uh, this, this financial year, we're, we expect to close at 150 crores. Uh, and then we'll be doubling every year. Okay. Oh, that's IPO? Uh, in, in, in the plans, uh, we're, we're... You have to give an exit to all of yeah, these investors, yeah. give you fact we're, checks. We're, we're, we're a few years away from that, but the, the goal is uh, to do an IPO. So in this uh, funding round, did your existing investors double down? Some, yes, yes. We, we, and actually, there was opportunity for secondary, and none of our investors were really interested in exiting. So we do have the faith of, of, of all the investors behind us, and, and some of them did put in additional capital. The 200 cafes are going to open, and you know, just to map also what we're seeing overall, are you going to stick to the bigger cities, or is Blue Tokai now ready to become a mass brand and enter smaller cities as well? So we, uh, in this last year, we have expanded to places like Chandigarh and Pune. So we are looking at cities like that. You can't call Chandigarh and Pune smaller cities anymore. <laughs> so, so, so tier two and tier three, I think, is not really. I know on you're the, from Delhi, but we the, can't do that. Yeah, yeah. The, the focus will still be on these larger metro areas because that's where we see the, the bulk of the demand. Uh, for us, in order to gain operational efficiencies, we need to open four to five cafes within a geographic region. So that's why we're, we're looking at... Uh, Airports, major. railway stations... Airports we have, uh, we are looking at. Railway stations, not really no. the focus. They're going to be modernizing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we also told Matt that when he came to Blue Tokai that um, he's going to show you folks something that he thinks would be a really good value add from the co-founder himself. What are you going to show us? I'm going to show you how to make a pour over. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, so apparently there's a lot of technique that goes behind a pour over. It's not that you just put some paper over your no, cup no, and no. pour over. What's the technique? What's the secret? So I'm going to show you. But so today we're going to brew a birthday blend. It's our 10th anniversary this year. Happy uh, 10, double thank digits. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And so actually this blend was made with coffee from 10 different estates. Okay. So every year we bring on new partners. And this has uh, one coffee from each one of these that we brought on over the years. So it's a very kind of collaborative good effort. good when you have an explosion of all Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So first thing that you want to do is make sure you grind your coffee fresh. Yeah. Uh, so actually, coffee loses a lot of aroma and flavor the minute after you grind it. So if you grind your coffee fresh, you're going to get a lot more complexity in your cup. So tell me at your house, because you know, since we're doing this tutorial with you, how much coffee should one ground and keep? So you should grind it only when you brew the coffee, ideally. In an ideal so world. You can do a little bit only. Yeah, yeah, one cup at a time. So I'm gonna it's put it. Time in. consuming, no? No, no. If you have an uh, automatic grinder, it, it okay. takes seconds. So the other thing with the pour over is you don't want to just kind of wing it. If you just dump in coffee and dump in That's water, what I do. then you. And I always tell people <laughs> pour over suck. Yeah. So because you have to really pay attention to the the ratio. Okay. So for this, I'm gonna use a one uh, one gram of coffee to 60 ml of water. So the first step is to weigh the coffee. Since I'm just going to make one cup, I'll put in 16 grams. You don't even measure it? Oh, you got the rings me here. Yeah. 16 grams, guys. 16 grams. You want to have a medium coarse grind because you want the coffee to brew in around three minutes. 
Okay. If you put it too fine, it'll uh, take too long to brew. Mm -hmm. It'll become bitter and uh, over extracted. Okay. And if it's too coarse, it'll just run through and it'll become weak. So ground the coffee. The other important thing to uh, pay attention to is your water temperature. Um, what is your ideal water temperature? So it depends. Uh, different coffees require different water temperatures. This is a medium roast coffee, so I'm going to do 95 degrees. If I was going to do a darker roast coffee, I might brew at a higher temperature. And if I was going to do a lighter roast coffee, I might brew at a lower temperature. But if you play around with the water temperature, you can get different flavors out, out yeah. of it. Busy, I just put a kettle and wait for the smoke. Like it's boiling. That's so if it. it's boiling, it tends to over extract the coffee. So that also brings so that's also extra, bad then. That also brings an extra bitterness to it. So there is a lot of technique. So I'm just going to quickly wet the paper. Just well, I've never done that. It just removes any kind of paper flavor that's, that's in there. Dump this out. Put in my coffee to the scale. Now, you want to pour a small amount of water, which is called the bloom. This allows the bloom. any kind of carbon dioxide that's trapped into the beans to escape, which helps promote an even brewing. So you see the coffee's bubbling. That means that the coffee was fresh. Can we see the coffee bubbling, guys? So now I'm going to wait about 30 seconds. Let all that CO2 escape. Do you have a smaller contraption for like office desks? This is as small <laughs> as it gets. You can put this over your cup. Uh, that would be a way to yeah. shrink it. You can just brew directly into your cup. So now it's been 30 seconds. So now I'm going to slowly add more water to it until I reach the target water added. So because I put in 16 grams of coffee, I'm going to put 250 ml of water in here. So one thing you can also do to experiment is some people, they stir it to agitate it. Uh, yeah. That'll all change the flavor of your coffee. So the great thing about a pour over is it's very, uh, very flexible and very experimental. Yeah. So you can come up with this, different recipes to get different flavors out of your coffee. I know you're a purist, but I'm going to ask for our viewers because I know it's not even going to be part of your demo because he's a purist. How, when should one add milk? You may not want it, but the others No, no, it. so I don't personally enjoy milk, but I know that most people do. So yeah. we're very... Uh, I don't either, but I know. Yeah. I know that, you know, that's the way it's taken. And most people like it. And so we're very supportive of people having coffee however they like to drink it. You have so, to listen to the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but so don't... I mean, we get questions that can I add the milk directly to yeah. the brewing? And that won't work because no. milk doesn't extract flavor So you have to do it in the cup. That's how I asked So you it, finish yeah. brewing and then add milk to taste. So here it's filtering out. And, and, and now tell me something else. Um, which one do you like the most? French press? Um, do you want to do it with the Italian pot? Do you do it like this? So I like uh, pour overs the most. I like paper filters Why? because it removes all of the sediment and so you get a very clean expression of flavor. So any method where you use a paper filter, you're going to get a cleanest mm -hmm. tasting coffee. So uh, pour over is good. AeroPress is also a good method. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I tend to drink. When I'm at uh, office, I drink Americanos. Okay. So awesome. I like the sort of the, the quick kind of punch well, that that's, it gives. Uh, pour over there for you, ladies and gentlemen. And there is actually a lot of technique. I just never knew about it. Maybe that's why I never liked it. See, it's not, <laughs> so, not so difficult, but uh, also gives you freedom to experiment. And at the end of the day, you have a great tasting cup of coffee. Okay, so now you guys go. We're going to enjoy our coffee.